Welcome to Intuitive Reactions on Armenian Matters, and this is number 30. Tomorrow, 24th of April, is the date that commemorates the Armenian Genocide of 1915, a genocide that was perpetrated against Armenians in Turkey by a previous Ottoman regime under the cover of World War I. This genocide resulted nefariously in well over 1 million victims, death marches across the desert, and so much pain and angst. It also, by the way, resulted, and this is not often told, it also resulted in so many Arab and Muslim countries in the Levant, Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, Palestine, Iraq, and others, welcoming the Armenian refugees fleeing Ottoman Turkey with open arms and giving them shelters. Let us not forget their hospitality. But let me now go back to my childhood for a moment. I was very fond of my grandfather and I have very vivid memories of the times, limited perhaps, but still, that we spent together when I was a kid. My grandfather used to come from work, sit down in front of that black and white Philips TV set. He had his table in front of him and he used to play cards. In Armenian, we used to say, fal gpanar. And he used to play cards and watch the television at the same time. I remember I was sat next to him, watching him play with those cards, talking to him. And I know that at the background, there was that most famous of soaps, Peyton Place, playing on the black and white screen. Until such time as uh, supper was ready. And when I say I was a child, I was hardly 10. One day we were sat there together and he was watching some program whilst also Falg Panar playing cards. Then he looked at me and he said, Harry, why are we Armenians in Jordan today? What do you expect a 10 year old to, to say? So I looked at him rather inquisitively, and he realized that he, I was waiting for him to provide the answer. So it seems to me that he found that moment, the right moment, or the right first moment, to tell me about the harrowing stories, the really, truly harrowing stories of his family fleeing Ottoman Turkey during the Armenian genocide in World War I. Now, this is not somebody reading a text. This is not somebody who is basically recounting a story he'd heard or a narrative given to him by somebody else. This was a little kid who had himself witnessed the pain, the mutilation, the misery of that genocide. I was shocked. As a nine, 10 year old, I was trying to absorb information that was way above my capacity. But I did. And I heard a few more stories, very few, because he wasn't somebody who kept on talking about the genocide. It was too personal, too painful for him to constantly reveal this story or that. But he felt, and he knew that I loved the man and was fond of him, I admired him. He wanted me to know a little bit about my past as Harry and our past as Armenians. So fast forward a little bit. I left Jordan. I went to France for my studies. I was fortunate enough to grow up there. Then became a lawyer and later an international lawyer in the UK and suddenly found myself at some stage in my life in London, being the executive officer of the campaign for recognition of the Armenian genocide. 
I started lobbying for the Armenian genocide and its recognition across all our four nations. So whilst my grandfather had asked me many years back that key question, why do you think we are here in Jordan, Harry? I kept asking myself a slightly different question than that of my granddad. Why are we Armenians in the diaspora today? The answer to both my question and that of my granddad is really simple. We Armenians, as well as Pontic Greeks and Assyrians, we were kicked out of Ottoman Turkey during World War I under a multitudinous of pretexts. We were accused, or our forebears, forefathers were accused of being fifth columns, siding with Russia against Turkey in the war. We were accused of being Christian, not Muslim, non-Turkic. We were accused of being far too rich or far too clever for our own good, and also for holding too many important positions in the country. Do you commit genocide against the people for those reasons? As a people, we were made refugees. And we were lucky that not all of us were killed. But that was a hundred years ago. How does the pain inherited genetically, historically, culturally, from generation to generation of diaspora Armenians? How is it comparable to other major issues, such as Nagorno-Karabakh or even the Ukraine war? I don't need to compare it because each one has its own place in our reality, in our world. And why did I say after Nagorno-Karabakh, the Ukraine war? Why did I pick out the Ukraine war? Simply because it's chastening, it's, it's surprising for me that politicians here in the UK let alone in Ukraine itself, are keen to describe President Putin's actions in the war in Ukraine as genocide, and President Zelensky pushing EU leaders to pronounce the G word, while the Armenian experience that has been validated by lawyers, historians, and genocide scholars has not been recognized either by the United Kingdom or by Ukraine. See, isn't that a little bit bizarre? Remember the 1948 Genocide Convention that I have actually studied was put together by a Polish Jewish lawyer, Rafael Lemkin, who referred to the Armenian history when writing this convention. So I find this British political attitude, my country here and now, truly shameful. I also find it galling and hurtful, but let me be frank with you. I'm not a cantankerous uh, old fossil, or at least I don't think I am. So tomorrow on 24th April, the day and date of the commemoration of the Armenian Genocide, the 107th anniversary, I shall simply remember all the victims of this genocide, including those from my own family whose sacrifices were not in vain. I personally, and I'm sure many, many others across the diaspora would tell you this, I cherish the aggregate memories that contribute to who I am today. And so today, I invite more and more righteous Turks. And believe you me, there are many righteous and wonderful Turks, some of them friends in the UK, in Jerusalem, in France. I invite them, as well as my non-Armenians, to join all of us who not only seek 
this plainly epistemic truth, but also try to apply it. A truth, after all, that we are told time and again should set them and us free. So tomorrow, 24th of April, 2022, a Sunday, when Armenians in Jerusalem are actually celebrating Easter, the, the, the Feast of Hope, I shall also remember my grandfather and say, Mezbaba, Genatzet, to your memory. <laughs>